Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Biology or Dr. Burgess, whatever you like. Anyway, so uh, this is uh, to do with competition. So this is populations and ecosystems. And we're gonna, today we're gonna look at interspecific and intraspecific competition. So uh, just a quick recap, so competition is when two or more individuals share the same resources such as light, space, food or oxygen that is insufficient to sustain all competition will result. And there are two types of competition you need to know for A-level and that is intraspecific, so notice the A in red, so when organisms of the same species compete for the same resources. So a good way to remember that, intra, same. And interspecific is when organisms of different species compete for the same resources. So yet again, inter, so you say the ER is the same as different. So that's the way I remember the difference between the two. Now, in terms of exam questions, um, they will give you lots of different examples and more, more than likely it will cover plants or animals you have never heard of. OK, so it's very important that you apply the information, the knowledge that you know from this section of work. And I will be going through quite a few different examples with you, whether these will come up in the exam more than likely not, but it will give you the general kind of flavour of what to expect. A very good example is the limpet. So limpets are found on the seashore uh, and they live on rock, OK, and under stones on rocky shores um, around the UK. They fe feed on algae such as seaweed um, and they use what we call a rasping tongue uh, to graze. OK, so they're, they're very effective at grazing algae. So they move during uh, when the sea is um, in, OK, um, the limpets move around the rocks um, when the tide is in, but they always return to their favourite spot. So they have different spots and you can actually see in this one, you can see that they uh, create worn out uh, areas where they will go back to every single time. So they tend to stay in one area um, and there's going to be competition with other limpets for algae. OK, um, so the, as it says there, the home scar helps the limpet to better attach to the rock, stopping it drying out and desiccating until the next tide comes in. So obviously, when food is plentiful, when there's large amounts of algae, then um, food is plentiful and populations will increase as per this very basic animation. Um, so there we go. So you can see that it can sustain a large population. However, what will happen is more organisms will compete if food resources are depleted. So, for example, let's imagine they deplete that food source. Um, and what will happen is you will get a lower carrying capacity um, and the population will decline. So um, if algal food sources again increase, then the limpets will have more space, more food. So increase in their population size and therefore a higher carrying capacity. So um, they're constantly competing with each other for that space and food. So another good example of intraspecific competition is the robin. So the bird, the robin, and um, the robin is uh, very good at having territory. So you'll only find one robin in a specific area because they, they protect that territory. They won't allow other robins into that area and they will fight them. In fact, there have been studies where um, people have put out uh, fluffy kind of um, uh, fluffy toys of robins and uh, the actual real robins will attack those fluffy robins because they're looking for the red breast um, and therefore um, there is intraspecific competition. So before I talk about uh, interspecific I just want to talk about something called um, it, the ecological niche. So we talked about niches. So a niche is where an organism lives and what it does includes all the biotic and 
abiotic conditions to which an organism is adapted to survive, reproduce and maintain a viable population. Now, um, you will not find the same, you will not find different species in the same niche. And so many um, uh, species are adapted, highly adapted for specific food sources. And this is what we call resource partitioning. So although you can see these birds, so these warblers, they live on different parts of the tree. So they have different niches on a tree and they spend their time eating in different parts of uh, the conifer or spruce trees where they live. OK, this was the idea concluded by Robert MacArthur in a study on five of five northern American warbler species. So um, this is called resource partitioning. And the advantage to these warblers are that they um, can utilize different parts of the tree and therefore they're not directly competing with each other for the resource. So on to interspecific competition. So if different species share the same resources, uh, same source of food, they'll be less available to both of them. So this means that both populations will be limited. So if two species are competing and one is better adapted to its surroundings than the other, then the less well adapted species is likely to be out competed, unable to live alongside the better adapted species. Classic example of this is the grey and red squirrel. So red squirrels are uh, native species in the UK and they've been around for about 10,000 years, whereas grey squirrels were introduced from North America by the Victorians in the 1800s um, and they escaped and developed wild populations um, in the late 19th century. So uh, the problem is for the red squirrel is that grey squirrels compete more successfully for food and habitat. They're larger, they're more robust, they digest seeds with higher tanning content such as acorns so they can um, utilize more food sources. So this forces red squirrels into other areas particularly into areas, for example, where there are spruce trees and fir trees, where grey squirrels don't really inhabit because they don't prefer those type of food sources, uh, but it makes it hard for them to survive. The other really bad thing, thing for the red squirrel is that grey squirrels transmit a squirrel pox virus, uh, which they are resistant to, but red squirrels are not. So uh, red squirrels often die of starvation or dehydration. So here's a really good squirrel distribution map here between the 2.5 million grey squirrels compared to the 140,000 red squirrels. So you can see 1945, um, many areas, the red areas, you can see there was a large distribution of red squirrels and grey squirrels particularly uh, were in more in the southern part of England and in the Midlands and then parts in the northeast of England. And then 2000, you can see the vast majority of England with only a few spots have red squirrels. Red squirrels are, are going to be more in the highlands of Scotland and parts of Ireland. What's interesting in the two, this middle map is that you can see that red squirrels can be found on island areas, for example, the Isle of Wight and also in Anglesey and parts of the Wirral there as well, where they've been protected. So 2010, and again, you can see um, the red squirrel populations are decreasing. However, if you look at Anglesey, you can see it's actually increasing, and that will be due to human intervention. That will be due to um, the uh, exclusion of grey squirrels in certain areas. Uh, so they might have um, conservation in terms of reducing grey squirrel populations. This is the, probably the most famous interspecific example in the UK. Whether they would give you that in an exam, I don't know. But um, the main th the reason I'm showing it you is that whatever example they give you, they will give you some data. They might give you maps, they might give you graphs, they might give you a table of data to analyze. So this brings us on idea, the, uh, to the idea of the competitive exclusion principle. So question is, can two species live together with the same niche in the same place? So many scientists have done studies with bacteria 
for example, and with fungi and protists and animals to look at whether this is the case. And the principle states that two species occupying the same niche cannot coexist in the long term as they come into competition for resources. So at times, yes, they can live in the same niche when there is an abundance of resources. But once those resources are depleted or are starting to decrease, then competition will ensue. So a classic experiment is uh, one that was done with two species of fast growing protists. So they looked at um, P. cordatum and P. aurelia, and they're two species of paramecium. They're grown separately with identical amounts of food and resources. So you can see uh, they were grown until they reached their carrying capacity and leveled off. So you can see P. cordatum is uh, increases at a slower rate than P. aurelia. You can see P. aurelia increases the S-shaped curve there. The growth curve is much quicker and it reaches carrying capacity much quicker than P. cordatum. So uh, there's a difference in those species growth rates. So when these scientists grew them together, P. aurelia outcompeted P. cordatum, causing its extinction. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea that two species competing for the same resources cannot coexist in the same place at the same time. Another example is the barnacle. So again, barnacles live on rocky shores. Um, and in, in this case, there's two species of barnacles. They live in intertidal regions, meaning that at times of the day they are exposed to the air and at other times they are under the water. Um, and you can see the two species, the brown species and the blue species. So apologies for my um, for saying this, probably getting this wrong, but I think it's um, Thalamus, Thamalus and Balanus. Um, so the two species and you can see their distribution. So it says describe the distribution of each species. Well, Balanus is most concentrated here in this diagram on the lower intertidal area. OK, whereas Th Thamalus is most concentrated in the upper intertidal area. OK, so it says there's a question here. Larvae of both species are free swimming and can settle anywhere on the rock. Suggest why uh, don't we see both species living together? And the reasons being that there are, excuse me, I'll just move myself over there. Uh, the reason is that it's due to abiotic factors. So it's not just biotic factors. So abiotic factors, the desiccation, going to be more desiccation and drying uh, on the upper shore. So they're exposed um, to the wind and the sun. Um, they're also able to withstand wave action. So balanus is able to withstand wave action on the lower shore. Um, biotic factors, there's going to be competition for food and position. Now, there's a famous uh, experiment done by, uh, I think it's Joseph Connell. And uh, in the first experiment, Connell removed the thamalus from the upper area and no balanus replaced it, OK? So he concluded that balanus could not survive in an area that experienced so much desiccation. So that, that would point to the fact that that thamalus has some form of adaptation to reduce desiccation. He then did another experiment, experiment where he removed balanus from the lower area and thamalus replaced it. So the conclusion to that was that balanus was a more successful competitor in the lower zone. So there we have two examples. Not to say you will get those examples. I have seen exam questions on uh, things such as squirrels and limpets and barnacles, uh, but it could be on any species. And what you've got to do is analyze that data. So here's some uh, exam tips for you. So firstly, you will be given data for any species. So it could be a plant, animal, bacteria. You need to remember that many of the questions in this section of work will be related to AO2, which is about uh, that's your assessment objective, AO2. So applying your knowledge and understanding of scientific ideas, processes, techniques and procedures. 
and you will be expected to analyze and handle quantitative data. So you need to analyze, interpret and evaluate scientific information. But uh, as I said, if you do come across something you've never seen before, don't panic. It's the basic knowledge of intra and interspecific competition and talking about abiotic and biotic factors and adaptations that are really important in this section of work. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I will see you soon.